Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Uh, looks like we're up to about 50 participants total, so that means 45 guests. Um, some of you might have been here during the, uh, the first session, and if you're returning from the first session for this second uh, installment of our orientation, uh, we're delighted to have you back. Uh, if it happens that this is your first visit with us, uh, we're glad to have you join us. Uh, this is the second of three uh, orientation segments. Ordinarily, we would do an in-person orientation of a number of hours length um, and kind of package it all in one day's uh, experience. Uh, but because we're on uh, virtual uh, formats using Zoom, uh, we felt that we might uh, do all of us a favor by uh, kind of breaking it down into smaller segments, more digestible pieces, so that you weren't sort of sitting there for three hours straight uh, looking at your screens. Uh, so again, welcome today. Um, I'm going to just say a few words uh, and introduce myself, and then I'm going to hand it back to Navani. Uh, I'm uh, Brian Poser. I'm the uh, Director of Aboriginal and Mature Student Services at York, and I'm one of your co-hosts today, along with uh, with our team, uh, Kate, Dilraj, and Alan, and Navani, who's uh, my co-host for the day. Um, we're delighted to represent the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Students, uh, where we work with mature part-time and transfer students to support uh, your success academically and personally from the time of your admission through to the time of graduation. Uh, so today we have uh, a really great lineup of uh, topics and content for you, uh, emphasis being on campus resources, and you'll have an opportunity to meet your mentors, uh, Alan and Kate, and hear a bit from them about their experience. Um, before we get going too much further, though, I'd like to uh, just take a moment uh, to provide a land acknowledgement, uh, which is something we do quite commonly at York at the beginning of uh, gatherings. Um, it goes as follows. York University campuses are located on the traditional lands of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabe Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Now, just before we go further, um, those land acknowledgements that you'll hear commonly at York are uh, uh, a way of introducing uh, awareness about our Indigenous communities um, and to help us begin to reflect on the process of of decolonization and of reconciliation at York. And so wherever you might be today, you may not be in Toronto, you might be located somewhere further afield. Um, we'd invite you to think about the space that you occupy and whose traditional lands you might be occupying now. And um, to think about your role as, uh, as a Canadian person uh, in, in how you might interact with our indigenous uh, populations. Uh, we have a very, uh, strong uh, indigenous population here at York um, and always growing. So uh, there's lots to learn and lots to learn about. Uh, and we invite you to, uh, to be curious about those things and to, uh, to take time to learn some more about these various things. Um, the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant is sure a mouthful. Um, and what it represents is the notion that uh, these spaces that we occupy are shareable spaces, that and the dish with one spoon is meant to represent uh, the notion that we take only what we need. And uh, today, hopefully, you'll take lots of what you need from our conversation about campus resources, and you'll be able to uh, take those things forward into your academic year that's upcoming. Um, a couple of other things I just want to point out as we begin, um, we're going to be um, certainly acknowledging the fact that we're under the COVID-19 pandemic, and there's a lot of adjustments York has made um, to prepare for uh, the beginning of school in the fall term uh, with, the, with the presence of those things. You might be hearing in the news um, that certain areas uh, regionally were moving from uh, phase one to phase two to phase three. I believe still uh, Toronto and Peel um, may be in, um, in the phase two uh, still, uh, but other areas outside of Toronto are starting to move to phase three as of Friday. Um, a couple of things for you to note. Um, the full range of our courses are going to be online, um, mostly, um, mostly exclusively online, and that's important. Um, when you're choosing courses, you might see uh, a number of different codes associated, uh, lecture code, online, blended. And I think what I should care carefully mention to you today is that 
Uh, irrespective of those codes, which are common codes for uh, the usual, the, the old normal, um, these codes now should be just uh, a guide for what they might be like in the future. But for this fall, uh, the vast majority of courses will be held online and done through virtual means, whether synchronous chats and lectures or asynchronous opportunities for learning with recorded lecture components and reflection exercises. Uh, but again, the full range of courses pretty much will be available to you. Um, there are some courses, uh, there are exceptions to this. So they'd be small courses that require uh, scientific labs or um, in some cases, studio courses for the fine arts. For those courses that have a face-to-face -face component this fall, uh, please know that uh, everything around the, the return to campus for these students or the first time coming to campus for these students is being planned very carefully and we're guided by public health and government directives. Uh, York has been very cooperative around those things and um, our eventual return to campus, which uh, is undetermined at this time, we think perhaps uh, we'll be working from home into the fall months. Um, that eventual return will be uh, very carefully planned from a health and safety perspective and uh, we'll be returning to campus only when safe to do so. So uh, keep in mind, York really holds strongly to the notion that safety is the number one priority for us. And um, if you'll permit me, I'll share my uh, screen here momentarily um, just to show you a link or two um, that will help to demonstrate uh, a couple of places you can learn information. Um, sorry, so uh, places you can learn information more about these, um, these resources. So you'll see me sharing my screen here. Um, there's a yubettertogether.info.yorku.ca. And I believe, Navani, we're going to send these slides out to participants today. So anyone who's um, listening, uh, who's attending with us right now, please don't feel like you have to quickly write this down. We'll send you these details, but I wanted to highlight them for you. Um, all of the safety precaution activity that the university is undertaking uh, is explained and explored here on this website. So uh, that's really worth taking a few minutes to look at and you'll get a real sense how sincerely we're taking the issue of safety. Uh, for now, um, you'll see many of us here have virtual backgrounds. Alan and Kate seem to be occupying the same place uh, on the University Commons. Uh, Navani's got the background of Glendon College, and uh, I've got the, um, the Bergeron Engineering Center by me, um, looking from the west into the middle of campus. We're all working from home right now, and uh, we, we know you are as well in many cases. So. Uh, Again, the return to campus is going to be something very carefully plotted out, and we want to make sure you feel reassured about that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention today is that York is being very active around uh, ac the uh, issues around Black Lives Matter. Uh, there's been a lot in the news, um, starting again, things hit the, the news in a big way um, just a few months ago or a few weeks ago, and um, you know, there's been a lot of statements made about um, standing together against anti-black racism. Um, our president has issued a number of statements, but also um, has taken a further step. And we, we applaud this notion that it's, it's not enough to just make statements about uh, anti-black uh, racism and, uh, and condemning it, but rather we need concrete steps forward uh, to make things better. And so there's a link here from the president's office website uh, that outlines next steps in New York's plan to address anti-black racism on campus. So lots of, uh, lots of action around that, lots of activity around that, and uh, that's something uh, that we're really happy about going on at York. So um, without further ado, th those are my brief uh, welcoming remarks. Uh, today, again, you're going to hear a lot about uh, the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Students and what we offer and um, a survey or overview of a number of the other resources of campus. And so you'll get a really good handle on the richness of supports that are, exist for you. Um, all of these uh, that you're gonna hear about are, are available on campus and the vast majority of them are covered under your tuition costs. So no additional costs for you associated with them. So um, I'm gonna pass it back to Navani and Kate and Alan and Dilraj uh, to carry this forward. Again, welcome. Thanks for listening. And Navani, back to you. Thanks, Brian. If you could stop sharing your screen, and then I'll start sharing my screen. OK. 
get started. So I just wanted to let you guys know just quickly for the Zoom experience, um, you can actually click on your view at the very top and you could see speaker or gallery view. Uh, keep your camera, like I said before at the beginning, um, often muted. Also that we would like for you, if you have any questions throughout the session, you could post it in the chat and our work study student Dilraj will actually try to do her best to answer those questions. Um, and then I can bring them up at the very end as well. So we'll do our best to do that. Let's go to the next one. So the agenda is basically just, we've got the welcoming remarks from Brian, our director. Um, I will speak to the ACMAPS services in a few minutes and we'll do a little icebreaker activity. We'll learn about your cute important resources that Kate and I will speak to and some important deadlines that will benefit you as a student at York We'll also touch base on um, our mature students panel, which I have Kate and Alan here today, who are peer mentors at ACMAPS, who will give you, we have some questions for them, and they'll just give you some brief answers to what their experience was as a mature student. Um, we'll also speak to a representative, her name is Sabina, from the York University Mature Student Organization, um, and she'll let you know what that group is about and how you could get involved, and then we'll do our closing remarks from there. Sorry, so there we go, Brian already spoke. So I will speak to the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Student Services. So at the center, we have Mature Student Success Series workshops that we offer to students. And these workshops are basically um, facilitated and led by our peer mentors. They usually help us in developing them as well. And they're there to help students build, build skills to be successful at university. Some of these workshops are time management skills, um, learning MLA, APA, which we will be offering in the fall of 2020. We also have a peer mentorship program. So these are third and fourth year level mature students who um, are part of our center and they come and they, get, they share their experiences with you. You can book an appointment with them. You can come and chat with them about any um, experiences that you're having if you're having difficulties with the professor. If you just want to just have general chat and let them teach you, like, you know, what are their experiences, what's, what study habits they can teach you, or just come to chat with them about anything in general, they'll be there to help you out. We also have a mature student first year experience program. And this program was actually created by Brian. Um, and what this program is, it's about workshops that's taken um, from different areas and we have different skilled colleagues of ours in the career center and learning skills services that put together this course on Moodle and you're able to see different workshops. We have meditation sessions and just to help you transition to university. This will be offered in fall winter of 2020, 2021. And if you go to our website, at the very end, you'll see the, the information there. You'd be able to register for this program. If you're interested, you can also reach out to me separately and I'll be able to send you the link that you'd be able to register. Um, we do serve all three uh, populations of mature, part-time, and transfer students. We want to let you know that, yes, it's possible that you can be part of all three of those populations, and we, and we do serve all three. Um, so we'll do our icebreaker game. So we'll do it for about five minutes. And what this is, is I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. Um, and in the breakout room, what we want you to do is to mingle and get to know other mature students, part-time students on campus. And what we want you to talk about in this session, in this little breakout room is, why did you return to school now? What is your program? And what is your passion? So we're just doing this so that you get to meet other mature students on campus. So I'm gonna go ahead right now. I think what I have to do is stop sharing my screen first. And then I'll put you into breakout rooms. And we'll give you about five minutes and then I'll call you back.
So I think everyone's coming back right now, slowly. We have 64. So I'll continue now. I think everyone's back. I hope you guys enjoyed the icebreaker five minute mixture that we've created so that you're able to meet other mature students. Um, and I mean, if you want to exchange, if you wanted to exchange your emails, you could do that as well. Um, but uh, it was just a quick thing to get you to meet other people. We hope you enjoyed that session. So we'll just move on now um, to our next slide, if this will go. Let's go back here. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next part of our presentation today, which is about important resources and deadlines. And this session will be facilitated by myself, Damini, and Kate, our ACMAP's peer mentor. Kate is a fourth year student in children, childhood, and youth, and she has a lot of um, experiences that she could share with you, and she will speak to some of the resources um, that she has used and then give you her expert advice on these. Um, but first, I will start off this part of the presentation speaking to the COVID-19 and online learning at York University. So for the fall session, as you all know, it will be fully online and York has a specific, Brian alluded to this uh, website earlier as well in his remarks, um, COVID-19 update. So if you were to I will be sending you this entire presentation with all the links. So if you click on this link, it'll lead you to the um, information that York has updated daily with regards to COVID-19. Um, and then we have online learning protocols and strategies as well. So this link here will lead students to any information about specific learning protocols and strategies that York has created for students. We also have sorry, go back one, um, a program that York has created for borrow a laptop. So if you're a student who unfortunately don't have a laptop, you can go to this link and you'll be able to get information on how you would get a, to borrow a laptop from York University to finish or do your um, courses online. I'm just gonna show you, uh, if we could go to the next one. So I'll speak to academic resources. So at York University, there are many different faculties on campus and the diff each different faculty has academic, advising, uh, academic advisors who you're able to go in and speak with. Most of you would have done this in order to enroll into your courses. Um, some students who are transfer students probably had to do it online or if you did you start as well. Um, but if you had questions with regards to the courses that you're in, the requirements, or you got transfer credits, you're not sure where the transfer credits went, you would go and see an academic advisor within your home faculty. So if you click this link, it'll take you to a website that has all the different faculties and the different academic advising contact information that you'd be able to reach out to someone. They are doing Zoom, they're doing email, they're doing telephone calls. So they're actually pretty accessible during this time. Also academic petitions. These are waivers of academic regulations or deadlines. So for instance, if you wanted to petition a grade that you might, you thought that you needed, deserved a better grade in a particular course, um, you'd have to fill out an academic petition. So this link will lead you to that. And again, each faculty has their own rules and policies and regulations with academic petitions. So you'd want to have a look at this. Also program changes. This is if there's a specific form that students have to fill out in order to request a change for your program. So for instance, if you were in, um, in sociology, but you wanna to change to history, you actually have to do a program change request. This link will lead you to that. There's also what we have at York University called the degree 
progress report. So this tracks your degree progress and your requirements. So usually for a student who is fresh and brand new to York University, um, this will work simply for you. If you're a transfer student, you got transfer credits. This may not work as easy for you because the degree progress report does not track transfer credits. So it'll tell you what courses you need to take um, in your program. However, if you got, for example, 30 transfer credits from college, it doesn't recognize that. So you'd have to go see an academic advisor to say, okay, I got this transfer credit statement, but it doesn't go um, allocated into the degree progress report. Where did it go? So that advisor will then have to tell you where it is but the actual degree progress report when you're looking at it won't recognize that, just so you know that piece of it. Um, but it's an easy tool to use and it'll keep you on track just to know what courses are remaining for you to complete. So we'll go to the next slide. I think Kate, um, you're starting to do the ESL Open Learning Center, correct? Okay, so, so just uh, to give you I um, guess a quick introduction because I only did it with uh, um, five other um, participants. My name is Kate and like Navini said, I'm a fourth year student um, for the Children, Child and Youth uh, Honors BA program. And I've been uh, at MAPS uh, PM mentor for a couple of years. I started um, my undergrad at York um, after working in feature animation for over 20 years to work towards getting uh, postgrad uh, or get into a postgrad program in art therapy in Toronto and at that junction I had been out for, from formal schooling for a long time. I've never been in university before as well. I come from the arts so it was quite a steep learning uh, curve for me. Um, and I just th I thought I'll, uh, I want to reassure you along with welcoming you uh, once again that uh, being a mature student uh, enriches your learning as uh, you are more focused, uh, you know who you are and um, have many like uh, life experiences that make context you know, so much richer and, and tangible. And then I commend you um, before I continue with uh, ac academic services uh, for being here, uh, whether you're at work or at home uh, with kids ready to embrace uh, the summer break however that looks like uh, at this point, I've been out of school for many years or transferring from uh, another post-secondary uh, institution. So um, just keep an eye um, at times on the chat because Del Raj, uh, who's our quiet ninja, she's very resourceful, might post you know, some quick little answers or links that might be useful to you. So let's continue. Um, so on academic services, uh, this like the ESL Open uh, Learning Center, and that uh, center um, provides ESL language support for, um, for students. Um, the libraries um, provide research support. So there's like uh, research assistants and, and overseers that uh, can give you a lot of very, very useful information. They really take their time to support students um, in different areas of a study, um, from citations to how to research, uh, what to research for, and where to research things. And uh, there are five libraries at, um, at York, uh, the main one being Scott. There's also the Peter Brown Fund, Osgood Law, Stacey Science and Engineering, and in Glendon um, campus is the Leslie Frost uh, Library. Um, in terms of learning skills and uh, services, I, this was something that I found incredibly useful uh, in, during my first year and part of my second. So they offer uh, workshops one-on-one uh, -on -one and well, when it was uh, physical, but now online, drop-in assistance to help uh, students develop skills needed to achieve their academic goals. Um, I found that we, the workshops are very concise, they're very clear, very, very useful. And um, I, I also um, thought I'll let you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure how it's gonna work um, virtually, but we will get this brochure called um, a, a Passport. It was like a passport where if you log eight workshops, you get a certificate that's attached to your, um, to your transcript. So that's something that's good to know. And then the study hub, study hub um, is where students can learn how to uh, set up uh, their own study groups, 
they, how they can recognize like um, early signs of like struggling with the academics uh, and uh, what to do about it and how to go about like finding or advertising one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. Um, so next, next slide. It's about academic resources. Um, so PASS is a, it stands for Peer Assisted Study Sessions. It's an upper year um, peers um, that facilitate study uh, sessions for courses known to be historically challenging. And I thought I would note that some colleges offer extra tutoring besides those listed um, here. Um, there's also, I would say, is it on the next slide? Yes. Um, so the next slide um, talks about Spark. I've used this online resource and I still do. Um, it's a free online resource that's designed to help students with academic writing assignments. So research, writing, learning skills tips, uh, citation, uh, formatting. I use it all the time. So whenever I do a written a report, I always have my, my tab uh, there ready. Um, so I thought, uh, yeah, I will mention that, that that was very, um, very useful to me uh, from day one. The Writing Center, this is, Writing Center sounds like a very specific, you know, small thing, but it's a very robust uh, resource on campus. You know, it almost seems like it's like an umbrella uh, for many uh, different services uh, for students. And um, it offers uh, individual instruction um, in all aspects of writing, including ESL. So the ESL aspect is under this umbrella by appointment when it used to be physically. Um, it was like physically and online. I used the online option as well as drop-ins. So um, if you go to the learning comments, um, which is, um, well, physically was a space that, um, is found in the second level at Skull Library, and they offer all kinds of support there. That's where you will find the research um, support, um, virtual services, online webinars, online tutorials. So if you click on that um, website. Yeah, for some reason, I'm trying to click on it and it's not going. Okay, so just uh, keep in mind, just make note to click on that uh, particular website because a lot of the things that I covered and I will be covering appears in a single page. And what you'll find is that for the summer session, because we're in, in a time of transition from like the analog way of uh, um, learning onto like a virtual space, you, you will kind of get a sense of how you can access those resources virtually. So it will give you like a bit of a glimpse as to what fall might look like but light so they've been doing a lot of changes very fast over the summer um so i i trust that by the fall it's going to be even more souped up um for us it will be much easier to even easier than now so thank you navini um wow. so i thought on next slide so the visual schedule builder i use this every single time i'm I'm planning out um, my year. I use the visual, visual scheduler and I thought um, we will go to that page. Um, so while Navini is accessing that page, I thought I'd let you know that it's an online self-serve tool to assist you in planning your academic schedules. And it allows you to, in, in a very visual way, because codes and numbers and times, you know, it's hard to see it in space until you see it visually. So it's very graphic and uh, it, it can, it, it's much easier to manipulate how you want your um, courses uh, arranged throughout the year or even within a week. And then that, that helps you. Uh, actually, I print that for my kids to see. I have it like taped on um, a door, you know, by the rooms. So they see my visual schedule builder. <laughs> Um, set up so everybody can refer to because it's so easy to refer to it. Um, this Ustart, uh, which is a new student resource, and I thought I'll, uh, if you could click on that um, page real quick, so you just get a, a bit of a sense of what it offers. 
So how to succeed at university, I read that. It's, it's like, a, even if you've been out of university for a long time, it's like some of it is a good refresher. And then if you keep scrolling down, you just see that there's just many, many, um, this is like tons of information that were just too much, but, but at least you know that it's there. It's almost like a one-stop one shop for new students. Thank you, Navini. And then UCAR, uh, which is a York University's official um, student um, card, but it's also an, a debit card uh, to use on campus. So um, with that card, you access uh, key services such as the library, recreation facilities, exams, you have to bring your ID for exams, food, some people pay for their food uh, with a card, shopping, events, discounts, and also there's such thing called Flex Dollars at uh, the uh, York University bookstore, where it, you automatically earn 5% or more back in scholar dollars, so you can you know, spend it um, within the bookstore. And, um, and also, what I use it most is for my photocopying. So whatever machine set you would find on campus, you know, once it goes hybrid or physical, um, you will use your student ID to pay for your copies. It's very convenient, very, very convenient. And well, this is located, you will get, you know, like an expanded sheet with, where things are located once we go hybrid or physical. Um, so the red zone is, uh, it's an orientation or transition program designed for new students. Uh, once again, that um, um, students need uh, in mind. So there's an answer for any student inquiries on the spot. So, so like a one-stop um, shop. Physically, it was like in the main um, area at Vary Hall. So there's like, um, you know, like a desk and there's all kinds of pamphlets. It's just, the campus is so big. It was kind of like nice to always go there and just pick up a pamphlet, just quickly shop around. But um, I find some of the, the services um, don't necessarily cater to mature students at times. So I, want, I would go between the red zone and ACMAPS because ACMAPS is much more familiar with the mature student needs. So I just thought I'll, I'll mention that. But as it starts for now, um, all, all of it, all those resources you can find online. Um, what else? So next slide. There you go. Um, so printing, um, like I mentioned before, you will use your student card um, when you uh, print it on campus. And this um, discount uh, copies at uh, the to this two student centers. There's a first student center, which is the older one um, by the main entrance. And then there's a second student center. So that's where you can get um, discounted printing using your card. And um, so the one at the student center and, and York libraries. So the ones at the student centers is part of the York Federation of Students. Uh, quite study spots. Um, physically is a very busy campus, um, but this, uh, this many, you have to be very creative. You just have to know, it's better to go online and figure out where a lot of these uh, study uh, spots are because there are many, and a lot of them people don't know about. So if you do your homework, um, you can find other study spots, but mine was uh, actually um, in the lounge at Yamso. Yamso is a York University Mature Student Organization. They have a little um, lounge um, um, on campus and I will go there and hardly any mature students knew about it unless they were part of the organization. So things like that, uh, like hidden treasures, but you have a lot of, um, a lot of options. So um, York University Bookstore, um, I thought that maybe we will click on that one just um, just show, just help them navigate how to find their textbooks. And regarding textbooks, um, I know, and I was one of those students, um, you know, some, some people would like to find things way ahead of time. Um, but um, a lot of times like the professors um, edit um, the syllabus or sometimes they'll go over the textbooks or the books that they want you 
to get on the syllabus, but they'll tell you on the spot, this one is optional, this one is required. So, you know, it, it will be up to you to decide how far in advance you want to um, plan for this. But what you do is that you go on, on, the, on this uh, link and then you look on the top right corner where it says textbooks. So you click on it and then you go, um, and then you scroll down and search for your books now. So you have to be logged in, um, you know, in order to find your particular um, textbooks, like for you. So you will be choosing the session and also the class, and it will give you a, a list. But at this point in the summer for the fall, it's far too early. A lot of the profs don't add or they keep adding textbooks until probably like a week or almost the week of the start of class. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Nagini. And next. So York International. So they offer a service for international students and, um, and also they do um, study like global uh, study arrangements too, like student exchanges uh, on like sister universities. Um, but another thing that people uh, don't know is that they think that you have to be enrolled as an official like international student to access their services, but under your um, tuition, you can access all services uh, on campus. So if you're a new immigrant, you might have applied as a transfer student but you have been in the country for a couple of years and you're still navigating things. And the, the campus is so, there's so much to discover and access. You can always go to York in, um, International and they can help you navigate a lot of these, um, these uh, concerns. So that, that's like a fantastic um, resource um, um, on campus. Assistive Technology Lab. They offer tech assistance for students that have, uh, you know, the, that have like accessibility um, um, status, I guess. Uh, so, you know, like um, you would have to make an appointment um, and just to, like establish yourself a student that needs accommodations for whatever needs. It could be like physical, mental, and uh, this is the technology lab has a lot of like the tools, the tech tools uh, for students to be able to integrate into the, the studies. The Career Center is um, another resource on campus that is, is as big and broader as the Writing Center. So people think the Career Center, you just go there and find jobs, get, get job ready and whatnot, but uh, there's way more services offered there. So I would strongly encourage you to check them out on, online and, um, and just like really search because they offer a lot of very interesting webinars too. I've taken some of the webinars online and they've been super useful. And uh, next, mature student housing. Um, so this York Apartments for Mature Students and Students with Families. So everybody thinks of um, uh, residents as like singles, young, you know, party, <laughs> you know, they have this idea, but they're actually um, apartments set up on campus for mature students that have families. And I actually have um, a friend that is staying with her two kids uh, there, and it just makes it so much easier, um, you know, for her as a, a single parent. So um, I, I thought that, you know, th that's actually a very um, good resource that people just don't know that is available on campus. So daycares, uh, there are two daycares on campus. Um, one of them is a co-op and the other one is like the Lee Wiggins uh, Child, um, Child Care Center. And um, the Lee Wiggins Child Care Center provides innovative child care in a family group setting to the York community with a focus on the needs of students. The daycare program um, allows the children at the Lee Wiggins uh, daycare to explore various areas of the fine arts to help improve their motor skills. And the daycare participants get an opportunity to learn various forms of art while having fun. So this 
even like a couple of options, um, you know, within York on, on that. And next, student counseling and development. Um, so it's counseling support for all students. I, I do also, a lot of people um, associate counseling with paid counseling, but they don't realize that uh, the tuition also includes uh, free counseling. Um, and I strongly encourage you to use their services, like even whether it's like for stress or, or trauma, because um, it's all included on your tuition. So I'm certain that they have things uh, set up uh, for this like virtual um, way of uh, um, being. And uh, um, yeah, just like, don't be shy of using those services. Uh, good to talk. It's free confidential helpline for Ontario post-secondary students. Um, student accessibility services. Uh, that's one service I use uh, because I have tendonitis. Um, they, they're like uh, offer educational support for students um, with all kinds of disabilities, um, from like you know very visible disabilities to um, invisible disabilities, like from dyslexia to, you know, like a uh, motor skill like mine. So you would make an appointment there with, um, with an advisor and they will, ask, they, they will give you the process. But the, what I needed was like a letter of accommodation to offer to my profs in order for them to accommodate me in terms of exams when it was physical. And that's, that's the place that you will go to, to get this. So next, go safe and security services. So staff members, and there's always two of them at least, uh, um, offer York University students to, you know, to mobilize like within the campus. So if you, and, and they connected to this uh, app. So if you are there physically on campus, it's huge. It's like a mini city. And uh, when people have uh, late classes, for example, or they don't feel comfortable in areas where there's not as much uh, traffic, you can go on this app or you can call them and two uh, security staff will show up and they will cart you. Like they have this little mini golf cart or they will walk you anywhere. They will even wait, you know, close by um, with you at the bus stop. So don't think of them as, you know, if there's a nation on campus, you call them. It's as simple as you don't want to walk by yourself was late at night and you need to go from A to B, they're there to help you. They're really useful. Um, parking services. So parking services is where you will get your parking permit um, and uh, for, for, you know, like the, the official parking lots and for visitors lots. Um, they're located, if you go physically at, um, on campus when it opens. They're located in the same space as where you will get your student card. So just keep that in mind. If you have those things that you have to take care of, is they're all you know, in the same area. Uh, next. So OSCA is the Office of Student Community, uh, Community Relations. They support students uh, impacted uh, by critical incidents facing personal crisis by providing advice and referrals and training. I've, I've known, I have never used Oscar. I've referred people to Oscar, but I actually have a couple of friends that have used Oscar and I've heard of other students and they find it an incredible resource that puts you in contact with uh, services on campus and in the immediate off campus um, community. Uh, they're fantastic. I have no complaints with Oscar. It's something that people are just not aware that are available um, at York. And the trans, bisexual, lesbian, gay, and asexual at York, it provides services and safe space for York's LGBTQ2S plus community. So um, I, I have a friend that, you know, go, you know, will go there regularly. And um, it's just like sometimes people just, have to find that place where they feel, you know, much more connected and heard and assisted and supported at York. Uh, next. So you hire. Um, that's York's University's own hiring platform. And they offer like full-time, part-time and work-study positions. Um, and uh, maybe we can click on that website just so people just get a feel for it. Thank you, Navini. 
you might find a white today. All those that are old enough to <laughs> remember that show. Um, so it's just a, just, I just wanted you to get a, a feel for that page, you know, what you can find in there. So you can see, like you can search for a job. You know, some of these services kind of like hard to just search, you know, with a general audience because um, you have to log in um, with your student ID. Thank you. And then, uh, oh, the, yes, like health and education promotion, influence healthy uh, living strategies on campus, which can be seen for academic support and beyond time at York. So you see a lot of things posted around campus and online when you get a, the York newsletters, they do, they're very active um, on campus and very resourceful. So they're one of those that have like, is in a big, big umbrella of different services. And YFS, health and dental plan. A lot of students don't know that part of the student fees um, mean that they have like um, health benefits. Um, a lot of students also are not aware that if you already have like a benefits plan, you know, through a partner or through your own work, um, you can actually opt out from this YFS health and dental plan. So that's my case. I have benefits through um, my spouse. So every year it's defaulted. So I think it's just to cover everybody, but just know that you can opt out. And this is a form that you have to fill out. It's actually very painless to do. Thank you, Natalie. Okay, thank you so much, Kate, for that. I am mindful of the time. I do know it's about 2.55 now, so it'll probably be another 10 minutes or so. I'll try my best to go through this. Um, so I will speak towards financial services. So at York University, there's a specific page, page sorry, that's um, for students called Student Financial Services. This is where you would find all the information about online resources that provides all financial information regarding OSAP, scholarships, bursaries, tax forms, anything that you need. This is where you would go to this website. Also, it has the student online account. This is a platform where students can check their detailed transactions and outstanding tuition payments. It does require your Passport York sign in. So once you sign in, you'll be able to see what your statement of account looks like, what you owe to the university, and any inquiries about this, you would call Student Financial Services. Also, due to the COVID-19 situation that we're currently facing, there's an emergency bursary fund um, financial assistance uh, that York has created and it's established to assist York students impacted by COVID-19 who need immediate short-term financial relief. So if any of you fall in that category, you can uh, take a look at this um, link and you can find out the details. Important dates and transfer credits. So I'm gonna click on the important dates. So at York, we have um, a specific website designated to important dates. This, these are the dates that you would wanna pay specific attention to because they deal with dropping courses, the deadlines to drop courses, to add courses, um, exam periods, university closure days. Um, so I'm gonna click on this and I just want you to have a look and see what this looks like. Um, because of my, through my 12 years experience at the Mature Student Center, these are basically a lot of where my questions come from. Um, so here you'll see the start date of fall classes is September the 9th. The last date to announce components of final grades. Fall reading week is October 10th to the 16th. Um, yeah, this is 2021, just wanna double check that. Uh, there's fall classes the day that it ends, um, fall exams, winter reading week, and then here at the bottom, it says add drop deadlines. This is where you want to space, pay specific attention to. So you, the last day to add a course without the permission of the instructor, which means you can actually just do it online on your own through the system, is September 22nd for a fall term course, September 22nd for a Y term course. Always pay attention to these F, Y, and I think this one's W, I can't see it right now. Um, but this is the last day to add a course with permission of the instructor. Then you have the drop deadline, last day to drop a course without receiving a grade. What this means is that, okay, I was in this course for the fall term, it's a three credit course. I'm taking this course thinking that, you know, I, I might do well in it, but then um, I get a grade of a D and I feel like, okay, 
I don't want this D on my, my, my transcripts. You know what? I'm going to drop this course, which means I don't get a grade on my transcripts. So it will not affect my GPA. That's basically what this means right here. And then the course withdrawal period. So you can withdraw from a course and receive a grade of a W on your transcript between November 7th to December the 8th. So they're giving you that. Also, what's important here is the add and drop deadline for the refund tables. So if I go back one, so this is important that you read through that. For There's refund tables for fall, fall winter 2020 courses. And at the refund table, you have to pay specific attention to the dates. So right now we don't have the fall winter refund table up, but they have the summer. So this actually gives you an idea of how to read this. So basically summer started, there is many different terms in the summer. So we have like S1, S2, S3, SU. So I'll pay attention to S1, for example. So S1 started May 17th, and then um, the refund, you can get a full refund. Between May 18th to the 24th, 10% is withheld. So it gives you a couple of weeks between when you start the classes for you to make a decision with that first week. If you drop the course between the 18th and the 24th, 10% of the course fees withheld, which means you get 90% back. If you drop it between the, the following week, which is the second week, I believe, 20% is withheld. Then if you go to June, 60% withheld. So basically it's the same kind of re, uh, structure that you're going to see for the fall with obviously different dates. Um, but you'd want to pay specific attention because the last one for S1, which is June the 1st, I believe here, there's no refund onwards, which means if you stay in the course, just had to drop it after June the 1st, it meant that you weren't getting no refund at all and you lost your money. So you'd want to pay specific attention to that as well. Transfer credit statement. So students who are transfer credit, tra transfer students from college or another university, you've gotten a transfer credit statement. This year, what they did is you have to accept your offer first, then they give you the transfer credits. So you go see an academic advisor, the academic advisor tells you where those transfer credits were allocated. Let's say you decide to change your program in the midst of all of this. You have to request a transfer credit reassessment, and this is a form that you have to fill out, and the admissions department will reassess it based on the new program that you've requested to transfer to. You have to remember to do this. Okay, that's where the transfer credit statement comes in. So now I'll do it really quickly. Um, I do have a couple of questions for my panelists, which is Alan Feynman, who's our ACMAP's peer mentor, and Kate Moo King Curtis, who's also one of the peer mentors, as you know, you just met her. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and uh, we'll go back into the gallery view and I'll ask Kate and Alan a few questions and get their feedback. Stop sharing one second. Okay, so Alan, are you there? Yes. Great, and Kate's right there. Okay, great. So I'm gonna start off with a couple of questions for each of you, and then uh, just get your answers. I'm not gonna do all of the questions because I'm mindful it's about 3.02 now. Um, so we'll start off with, what was your experience as a mature student for Kate? And then Alan, you'll speak to what was your experience as a mature transfer student? So go That's ahead, Kate. So, okay, so um, I, it, it was, a steep learning curve, I, I mentioned that, um, but uh, I had a lot of support on, on campus, like you just have to be very resourceful um, and advocate for yourself on campus and that helped me a lot. I, I really immersed myself in workshops and stuff like that in my first sad term, so that helped me and um, the support of my family and people that are close to me that are like fast readers, good writers, uh, people like that. Um, it didn't feel like as isolated as I thought it would be. Uh, it felt like I had like my little support group and that I will always go to and, and help me edit papers and stuff like that. So I, I was surprised that even though coming from the arts into like a academia, um, life experience actually helped me through a lot of my courses, so. And Alan? Yes, um, I'm definitely a mature student. Um, the last time I went to school was uh, in 75, I graduated from uh, Centennial College. So um, I came back to York in 2014 and I'm doing the uh, honors BA in psychology. It's a four year course, but I'm doing it in seven. So this will be my last year. 
transfer credits. I got 15 transfer credits from Centennial College. And my experience as a mature student uh, is, I mean, as I say, it was 40 years since I had been in school and uh, I took to what, uh, it was like riding a bicycle, everything came back. And um, I have better study habits now. So um, I, I just really, it wasn't difficult uh, getting into it after such a long time of, uh, of being absent from it, so. Okay, thank you, Alan. And as a mature student, were you able, um, sorry, hold on a second. What would you say are some positive aspects of being a mature student learner? Uh, who are you asking? Kate, Kate first. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, learning as a mature student has been just, re you know, richer and, and I just felt more focused um, just a, as a post-secondary um, school experience um, in my early 20s when I went to art college. It's just like completely different. I just, it, it was, I, I took it much more seriously and it was easier to focus. And what about you, Alan? What would you say are some positive aspects of being a mature student learner? Well, a lot of positive, one positive aspect of being a mature student learner is that people worship the ground that you walk on and that they, they, they really look up to you and, uh, and just uh, call you sir and uh, you're very respectful to you. Uh, but actually, I, uh, I feel, uh, I sort of feel, I feel less tense as a mature student compared mm -hmm. to when I first came in when I was 19 and I quit after two weeks because I was intimidated by the large lecture halls and reading lists. So now um, I have great study habits and I just, or my, my uh, not just study habits, but my uh, timetable, the time management. Um, so I focus on that and, uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of things going on in my personal life. So I can focus on that and I take uh, less courses. It's still full time, but I don't take a full five course load. I take two or three courses and it's quality, not quantity. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, so yeah, so it's, 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 it's nice being a mature student, uh, you know, and you can uh, sort of do what you wanted to do maybe when you were younger, but you didn't have the uh, patience. Okay, and as you both know, and maybe students who also went to college would know this, as a mature student learner, time management plays an important role while at post-secondary. How do you deal with juggling various roles and manage your time? Kate? Um, so for me, it is a moving target, um, even after uh, three years. So I have uh, two teens and one tween, and uh, as well as some health challenges. Um, I am still trying to stay adaptable. I think adaptable is something that I keep in mind and keep prioritizing, sometimes on a daily basis. I talk to other mature students I know on how they juggle uh, the many aspects of their lives, and, and that has helped. Okay, and Alan? Um, what was the question again? Um, it's regarding time management and how it plays an important role. So how do you deal with juggling various roles and managing your time while at school? Well, as I say, I don't have a lot of roles outside of, of school. So um, time management, I, I've said it before, uh, but it's, it's very simple. I just, um, in fact, I'm studying now for my fall term. I'm doing some pre-studying so I can, you know, be more prepared. And I, I try to be as prepared as I can for each lecture. So I read before the lecture starts. And, uh, and um, say I have 100 pages to read in 10 days. I just do 10 pages a day. As opposed to looking at it all, oh, oh, 100 pages. How am I going to do this? Just do it bit by bit, day by day. And, um, and, and that's how I, I manage my time. OK, and the last question I have for both of you, Kate, we'll start with you, is what advice would you give new incoming mature, part-time, or transfer students? Um, I would say uh, trust your process of transition and learning, uh, like, uh, you know, practice kindness um, to yourself. Um, it will be a very rewarding experience. Um, also make sure to access the many resources at the university because I did that. Um, I took a lot of workshops, uh, like I mentioned before, um, both online and on campus. A volunteer that helped me make connections and access other resources. and. And, um, and great friendships, and I remain um, unapologetically curious. So I think curiosity, adaptability um, was a uh, key. And see it as an adventure, as opposed to something that is very black and white. So you remain more adaptable to it. 
And Alan, what's your advice for new incoming mature transfer part-time students? Basically, uh, take advantage of the professor's office hours. I did that, and it seems that I was probably about the only one that did it. Um, younger students, I, they seem kind of shy, and they're embarrassed about may, possibly asking questions during lectures. I'm not saying all of them, but just feel free to ask questions at any time. And take advantage of the professor's office hours, and... Uh, you know, don't be, don't be shy, uh, you know, socialize with other people and uh, talk about, uh, well, say you have, you're feeling stressed, uh, there's the counseling uh, uh, services that they have there. And of course, you can always go to ACMAPS and, and uh, you know, they can, if you don't have the answer to a question, uh, go to ACMAPS and they'll, they'll probably have the answer for you. So yeah, yeah just basically, uh, just relax and know that things will come in time and and patience you 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 should uh, patience is a virtue so as i got older I, I i do have patience and um and i think that's a virtue so just relax things will come in time and uh, be happy and have a sense of humor about yourself Okay, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Kate. Um, so now the last person that I'm going to introduce is actually Sabina Garnova, who's um, the acting president, I should say, right, Sabina, for the York University Mature Student Organization. And she'll just give you a brief spiel on what the club does and what events they might have for the fall coming up. So I'll hand it over to you, Sabina. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're all finding all the orientation uh, sessions not too overwhelming because there's just so much information um but you can find everything online so and so i'm i'm an international mature student i'll be entering my third year of communication studies um i'm doing full time and i have two small kids so <laughs> everyone is in the same boat Every, everyone is in it together um I am the VP, I was the VP social, so I was doing all the social media um, and our artwork last year for YAMSO. So YAMSO stands for York University Mature Students Organization. Um, and it was formed in 2004. And it's the only student run club for mature students at the university. We have roughly 400 members. It's very fluid because people graduate, new people come, new people join. Um, and it's a mixture of full-time mature students, part-time who have been there for many years, um, and anyone with um, parents with young kids who might be living on site or off site. Um, and our main goal is basically to um, help serve York University's community of mature students, um, and connect them with different services, peer mentors, and we're more of the social, the social group. So um, prior to this whole COVID-19 thing, we um, uh, re held regular um, pub social nights on campus. Uh, we held the annual holiday party, which was for families with children and everyone else was um, invited to. Um, and as well as coffee meetings for different demographics, whether it was the seniors, um, parents again. Um, this year, we are obviously in the fall term, we are um, waiting, well, we can't use the lounge, which was our regular meeting place. So we offered a service where any mature students could come in and sit in the lounge, they could chat together, you can do your work quietly. Um, the lounge is based at Vania College and it was a very small cozy place um, where there's refreshments, there's computers if you need them. Um, we are, have yet to see what will happen in, um, in the winter term because we don't know about the health and safety guidelines yet. Um, but we will keep you posted. Um, we will be offering, again, virtual virtual social evenings or um, events for the fall semester. It will be on a regular basis so anyone can drop in and chat and meet informally. So it's not, um, you know, all about sharing information and knowledge because everyone is coming from different backgrounds and experiences. Um, so we will be posting those 
when um, when we figure out all the set dates. Um, currently, we have um, we have four VPs. Um, so I'm VP Social. We have VP Engagement and VP Events, and we also now have a VP for um, Parent Engagement. So we'll all be focusing on different areas of how we can engage with those groups. Um, I'm acting as the president and. If anyone has any questions, just reach out to all of us. Um, we are trying to be a lot on social media. We've got an Instagram profile, we've got um, Facebook, and we're on Why You Connect. Um, Navini will share all the details with you guys. Um, but if you keep an eye on those, I usually, because now there's not so much in-person interaction, um, we'll be doing a lot more sharing and information, best practice, knowledge um any events from other from other clubs or from other things that we might think are useful for mature students that will benefit you because it's obviously a difficult time um with uh, you know using technology and be staying motivated staying connected to campus which for me has been difficult trying to do summer courses and not being physically on campus can be a bit demotivating but hopefully we'll get through this all together um, we under normal normal circumstances we have a lot of volunteers who help to run the lounge so we have a lounge schedule um if the lounge access changes we'll be posting for volunteers um and if anyone has any ideas for what they would like us to cover or um want us to focus on you know we can always we work with ACMAPS very closely so we can always see if we can arrange something that people might really need to learn about um, so just keep us posted you can message us on facebook or instagram or um, we have a gmail as well um, yamsoyu at gmail.com um, and if there are a few more vp roles so if anyone wants to add anything to their resume um, we're very friendly we meet online for now and um, you can bring your ideas to the table if you know, if you need experience being VP finance for your BCom, you know, you, you can help us manage our balance sheet, which at the moment is quiet because we're not holding events, but you will have that title. Um, just let us know. I'll be posting up a updated list of roles, which is still open. Um, like I said, there are not, not many. So if anyone wants to join us um, on the executive team, you're welcome. Otherwise, just follow us on the social media and why you connect um, and all the information will come. I think I've covered everything. Any questions, let me know. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Sabina. So it's about 3.16 now. Um, the information for YAMSO is actually on one of the slides that we're gonna be giving you the presentation. So the last slide will be on YAMSO um, and how to connect with them. Also, if we have any other questions, I know that Jill Raj has been busy in the chat while I was sharing my screen. Um, so if you have any other questions, you're free to unmute yourself and just ask and we'll try our best to answer it. Um, however, if you do have to go, thank you very much for attending the session today. We do appreciate you taking the time to be with us. It is a recorded session as well. Um, so you can always find it on our orientation page and you'll see the video if you want to go back to it. But like we said, we will be sending you the presentation via email. I will also be sending you a bookstore orientation, which I got from one of my colleagues. And it teaches you how to actually go online and how to find your books and what's needed and what you would need to do on your behalf as a student um, from the bookstore. We'll also be sending you the campus resources and actual document that um, our student has created for you as well. And the survey, which is just a feedback, some questions as to how we did on this presentation, what we might need to change. Um, any feedback that you have will be appreciated with that. Um, so anybody has anything they would like to share with us, any questions that Jilra did not address in the chat? I'll leave it open for about five minutes or so. We'll stick around if you can if you would like to stick around and ask your questions, we're here to answer those questions. But again, thank you for being a part of the session today.